Chapter 10, Tangled Up in God's Beard. Ohio, about a minute away. This was the first interesting thing Mama had come up with since we'd been through Detroit, just outside of Toledo. We pulled over to at a rest stop. Mama said, okay, who's got to go to the bathroom? Who's hungry? Who got to get out of the car and start stretching and stretching? Scratching and stretching. The Ohio rest stop was really cool. It was chopped right out of the forest and had picnic tables made out of giant logs. The bathrooms were made out of the same kind of log cabin wood. The only thing about them was they looked kind of small from the outside. Mama looked in her Watson's Go to Birmingham 1963 book and told us, Okay, just a sandwich, some fruit, and some Kool-Aid here. Daniel, could you open the trunk so I can get some things out of the car cooler? While Mama got the food and Dad looked under the hood to the brown bomber, I went to the door in the little log cabin that had men carved on it. As soon as I opened the door, I gagged. Oh, the toilets in Ohio weren't anything like Michigan toilets. <laughs> Instead of a white stool with a seat, there was just a seat on a piece of wood with a great big open black hole underneath and the sound of flies coming out of it. No flusher, no water, no nothing. It looked like if you sat on the seats, you might end up getting sucked down under Ohio somewhere. I breathed through my mouth and spent only enough time in that log cabin bathroom to unroll a bunch of toilet paper. The woods outside looked like a whole lot better bathroom. When I was done in the woods, I passed Byron, who forgot again about his promise to not talk. He told me, man, they must be crazy if they think I'm set foot behind that on that hole. Bye's hands were full of toilet paper, too. We ate our lunch on one of the picnic tables, and Mama went back and a jug, made a jug of Kool-Aid with the water that me and Joey pumped. Only Mama liked it, though. The water seemed like it had metal in it. It made the Kool-Aid taste like grape medicine. Me, Dad, Bye, Joey dumped our Kool-Aid when Mama wasn't looking, <laughs> but I had to ask for seconds to plug my nose and drink it because day one was my day to have peanut butter and jelly, and Mama always puts too much peanut butter on the sandwich. And you've got to have something to wash it down in case you start choking. And we finished eating Byron and said, what's the word? On them toilets, Mom and Dad, Daddy cracked. Dad cracked up. So you like those, huh? Dad said. Said Dad. Mama said, "You better get used to those, Byron. That's an owl house, and that's what Grandma Sands has." What? If you're trying to be cool all the time and something surprises you, <laughs> you sure do look stupid. Uh huh. Dad said. That's where you're going to be taking care of your business for a while. But I said, wait, let me dig this. You mean if I got to go to the bathroom, I got to go outside into a little t nasty thing like that? Ain't they got no sanitation laws down there? How are you going to get have a hole for a toilet and not get folks sick? Don't them things attract flies? Mama and Dad laughed again. Mama said, Your Grandma Sands always says it seems a lot nastier to be to her to be doing that in someone's house. The way she looks at it, the house is a whole lot nicer place if the facilities are outside. Oh, I remember the outhouses, Dad said. Oh, I remember when we used to go visit Grandmother in the country, and there would be a Sears catalog in the outhouse, and when you were done, you just tore off a page of the catalog, and we get the point, Daniel. Mama st stopped Dad. After lunch, Bye went back into the log cabin outhouse and came back with his pockets bulging with toilet paper. He told me, man, they must be it. On dope if they think I'm going to wipe my butt with some rough old catalog paper. We loaded the cooler back in the car and got back on I-75. When you're 10 years old like me, it, some of the time, no matter how excited you are, and no matter how hard you try, you just can't help but falling asleep in the car. I did a lot better than Joey, though. She was out before I'd even sucked all the leftover peanut butter off out of my teeth. 
She stretched out across the back seat, and me and Bai argued about who would hold her head and who would hold her feet. Joey drooled a lot, and so it was the worst job to hold her head. We had teased Mama so many times about planning everything so much in her notebook that Bai decided to be cute and ask, Uh, could someone check the Watsons Go to Birmingham book and see who's supposed to be holding Joey's leaky head, leaking head for the first hundred miles in Ohio? Mama and Dad looked at each other and laughed, and I did too. I really don't know why bullies have such a good sense of humor. It didn't matter who won the argument because the car started rocking me to sleep. Maybe someone could say the brown bomber was an old and ugly, but you could never say anything bad about its seats. They were the best things in the world. I leaned my head back and watched Ohio go zipping by. I couldn't keep my head from sinking deeper and deeper into the brown bomber seat. I woke up and got real nervous real fast. I felt something wet on my pants. It started to run down my leg. And I opened my eyes and said, Phew! It was just Joey drooling all over me. I complained that Mama made made jo- by Joey by take Joey's head for a while. I took her shoes off of, for her, and inside one of her shoes was kind of worn down picture of a little white boy with a girl's hairdo and smiling dog in a circle around both of them. It said Buster Brown. As I Drifted back to sleep, I wondered what a little white boy would think if he knew that he was getting stepped on every day by my sister. (laughs) Then my neck got rubberized again, and my head nodded down. It nodded back up when I heard Mama say real soft to Dad, How you doing? Cincinnati's just ahead. Oh, I'm fine. I've still got a lot in me. I think I'll just stop in Cincy for a stretch and some gas. Really? Mom didn't sound too happy. Sure, why not? The kids are all asleep, and you look like you're about to be gone gone yourself. Mama didn't say anything, but I knew she wouldn't have to change her plans if she if we didn't stop for the night in Cincinnati. Dad kept trying to make it seem okay. He smiled at her. Don't worry, Walona. We might as well just go a little farther. I wanted to lean up and whisper to Mama that I knew what Dad was planning. The last time I was asleep, Byron had put Joey's head back on my lap, and I was just too lazy to move her. But I knew if I wasn't so sleepy, I could tell Mama what I heard Dad tell Mr. Johnson saying before we left. Mr. Johnson knew a lot about cars, so Dad asked him to take a good look at the bomber before we went to Alabama. I was sitting in the car pretending I was driving, and Dad told Mr. Johnson we, we were, were under the hood. Oh, yeah, Daniel, this baby's sound as a dollar. Well, let me ask you something, Theo, Dad said. Do you think she could run it to Alabama straight? Hmm. Mr. Johnson thought for a minute. I don't see why not. As long as you keep your eye on the oil and the water, it shouldn't give you a, a lick of trouble. The question isn't the car. The question is, could you do that straight? Well, the most I've done before is eight hours. And Malona says it will take about 15. But I've talked to some people about at the, in the shop, and they say it shouldn't be too tough. A couple of them are from Texas, and they say they've driven it straight to Alabama or closer. So why not? This Plymouth can do it if you can, Daniel. Good. Besides, think of the money we'll save. I'm going to give it a shot. And if I'm going to too well, Walona, well, she, if I, but I'm going to, I'm not going to tell Walona, she'd die. She's got this whole trip planned down to the last minute. Dad made his voice go kind of high southern. And Daniel, before Lexington and Chattanooga, you will inhale 1,005. 105,564 times, and you'll blink 436 times, 436,475 times. That is, of course, unless you see something exciting, which then, in case you'll inhale 123,876 times and blink 437,098 times. Dad and Johnson start, Mr. Johnson started cracking up. As we were going into Cincinnati, I waited. I wanted to lean up and whisper to Mama, Hang on, Mama. 
you're going to blink to blink and then ec- and then inhale about 62 zillion more times before you get out of this car. But the warm air from the highway noise and the brown bomber seat and the way Joey was breathing all pushed me back to sleep. I was out through most of Kentucky, even though we stopped at some more Ohio-style rest stops. I was so tired that even I used a couple of outhouses, but I kept the door open and made Dad stand outside. So in case I fell in, he'd be able to pull me out. The next time I woke up, we were pulled over at Tennessee Rest Stop. There was no bathrooms, no outhouses or anything, just a pump and a picnic table. When Dad turned the headlights off, everything disappeared into the blackest night anyone had ever, ever seen. As we looked out the windows, Mama checked her notebook and then announced, This is Appalachia Mountains. We're over 6,000 feet above sea level. This is the highest, higher than we've ever been before. And she didn't sound real happy about it either. All four doors of the bomb bomber opened and the weird Watsons got out. As soon as everyone was awake enough to look around, we all bunched bunched up and hugged around Mama and Dad, even cool Brian. Dad laughed. What's wrong with you guys? Daddy, look how scary it is here, Joey said, pointing at all the giant shapes in the darkness. Nonsense, pumpkin, those are just mountains. Dad was calling, just the mountains were the scariest thing I'd ever seen. On every side of us, there was big black hills and behind them were even bigger blacker hills. And behind those were the biggest blackest hills. And it looked like someone had crumpled up a pitch black blanket and dropped it on weird Watsons down into the middle of it. The air up this high didn't seem right either. It made you feel like something was bad was going to happen. If this was a movie, there would be a loud, scary organ music playing right now. Mommy? Joey asked, sounding real scared. Where where did all the stars come from? We just, we all looked up, and instead of seeing the normal amount of stars, it looked like there had been a star explosion. There were more stars in the sky than empty space. That's because the air is so clean here. It looks like the sky in Birmingham. Up close to us, the rest stop. All we could see was the pump. It looked like a deformed, evil, one-armed space robot. As our eyes got used to the dark, we could see the picnic table behind it in the black woods. Most of the time, Mama and Dad don't like arguing in public, but Mama was real hot. She said, well, you see what your nonstop driving has done? Do you see? Instead of being in a motel, you've driven us straight into hell. <laughs> that got everyone's attention because Mama almost never cusses. This really scared me. I know it's stupid, but before I could stop myself, I said, Hell? I thought you said this was Tennessee. <laughs> Joey started boohooing right away. After we nervously nibbled our snacks, everyone sat on the same side of the picnic table. Me and Bai had to go to the bathroom in the woods. We found two trees where we keep our eye on each other and said, Bai, do you think there are any snakes out here? Snakes? I ain't scared of no damn snake. It's the people I'm worried about. I stopped looking at the ground and began watching the black woods. What people? I wish I'd picked a tree close to Byron. Didn't you hear Mama say this was Appalachia? So? Man, they got crackers and rednecks up here. That ain't never seen no Negroes before. If they caught your if they caught your butt out here like this, then hang you now. And they eat you later. What's a redneck? A hillbilly. Only worse. Some of them ain't don't even speak no English. We made a break for the bomb bomber. If Byron was trying to scare me, he was scaring himself too. I went too fast though, and I fell a couple of a couple of warm drips dribbling down my leg. This time I couldn't blame it on Joey's drooling either, but I didn't care. Having a little pee on your pants had to be better than being dinner from some redneck. We looked at the car we loaded the car back up and no one was really relaxed until Dad shoved back our I seventy five and turned the headlights on. The lights lo- knocked out some of the darkness out of the way and we felt safe again. 
everybody was better and laughing and talking a mile later. I can't believe how this air feels, Dad said. We was right. Everything smelled light and green. Whose turn is it on the altar glide? Mine, I yelled. And I handed Mama yakety yak, and they all moaned. Dad stuck his hand out of the window just as the song came out. Oh, feel that coolness. It feels like you're running your fingers through silk. Me, Mama, and Joey, and even Daddy, cool, all did what Dad told us to do. And Dad was right. It felt great. Look at your fingers in it, Dad said. Oh, we all did. And the air seemed slippery and cool as it blew on your hand. We're so high and the air is so perfect that, do you know what I was think of, think we we're doing? Dad asked. What? I think we're go we've got our fingers in God's beard and we're driving along. We're tickling him. Byron acted like he was going to throw up. As we drove through the mountain with our arms sticking out the windows and with our fingers wiggling in the breeze, I thought about Brom Bomber. I almost looked like a bug lying on its back with four skinny brown legs kicking and twitching and trying to put it back in its feet. Whatever we were doing, it was the best part of the trip so far. What could be better than driving on a mountain while Yakety Yak played on the cool, light air blew over you?